Welcome everyone to Pure Farming 2018. Pure Farming 2018 was just released yesterday on both uh, from the de developer's website as well as on the Steam platform and contains a lot of content, a lot of interesting content that I can't wait to share with you guys. But before we get to um, the gameplay itself, let's take a quick look at what is available from the main menu. There are multiple modes that you can use from the career mode entitled My First Farm. Then you have several farming challenges that you can undertake. There is the free mode or the sandbox mode, which is what we will be using for the playthrough. And then there is also a mod importer. Now, right now you see buggy listed here. This was a, uh, a test mod that the developers showed in a, uh, in a video, just showing the capabilities of adding mods to the game. And there is a, uh, a detailed manual as to how to import various 3D models into the game. So it's it's obvious that the the developers recognize the need and and demand for mods in this type of game. And so they've added that support. And my understanding is they're going to continue to expand that support to support more and more different types of mods. So I very much support that idea. Also, you've got add-ons. There are two DLC right now that I have just simply because I pre-purchased the game. There is the Germany map, as well as one of the smaller tractors that is very handy around the farm. Okay, and then under custom, we have some very, very basic uh, ability to adjust our farmer. We can adjust the cap he wears, but again, you can see this is pretty basic stuff, and I haven't done a whole lot with it, mostly because, you know, None of this matters a whole lot to me, but you can see we've got some different options here on uh, what we can choose, some different pants as well. Now, some of these like this right here, unfortunately, I can't spin him around as far as I know, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty interesting there. All right, but I'm going to go with uh, the basics, but you do have some options there. And then I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the options in the game, specifically the controls and the graphics options. Now the game has had a couple of issues already. Uh, controls, it's got some issues with the fact that steering wheels are indeed supported, or at least some of them are. I don't know the full list of what is supported, but my Logitech G920 is supported and I have used it in the game. Unfortunately, uh, the game has some issues with that because it detects my brake pedal as the accelerator and my clutch pedal as the brake pedal. So it throws me off some when I'm doing that and my accelerator pedal is actually useless in the game. It does nothing. And we don't have the ability to key bind in the game right now. We can't, we can't change any of the bindings to what we would prefer. So we're kind of stuck with that. Now, my understanding is the developers are working on um, improving that in the future and giving us that ability, but there's another issue that we have right now with the control binding, and that is you're not allowed to use both your steering wheel and the keyboard and mouse at the same time. And what that means is you can't use the steering wheel, for example, uh, to drive around in the tractor and at the same time pressing some different keys to, uh, to use the tools, you know, your, your uh, attachments front or rear on the tractor and so forth. Whenever you're using the steering wheel, you have to just use the steering wheel and any buttons that you have on the steering wheel for everything. If you're using the keyboard and mouse, you're not allowed to use the steering wheel or any buttons that might be on it for anything. The game does give you the ability to swap back and forth uh, quickly with these, but again, it's mutually exclusive. If you're going to use the keyboard and mouse, that's all you're using for that time until you swap, hit the button and swap, and then you're using your steering wheel. So again, that's something the developers are taking a look at, but it very much is an issue right now. And we'll talk about that more as we get into the gameplay here in a few moments. I also want to show you the, uh, the graphic settings. Now, the graphics in this game, I think, look very nice. Uh, I'll not be comparing them to other uh, simulations. Instead, what I'm going to focus on in this game is, is it fun and am I enjoying it? Because I'm not one who believes that you have to pick one game in a genre and stick with that and that's all you can play. Everything else has to be trash. No, I believe if it's fun, you play it. And if there's 10 different games in a genre that are fun for you, then play all 10 if you want. That's the way I'm going to 
approach it. And I'll let you guys make your own decision based on what you see in the videos as to whether or not this is a game that you want to give a shot to. So our video settings, I'll be recording this in 1080p. We're using what the developers are calling an exclusive full screen mode. Now there is the normal uh, full screen mode whenever you start up the game, but that, uh, and I'm not even talking about here within the game, I'm talking about whenever you go into Steam and first hit the play button, uh, I'm, I'm, brief menu of two options comes up the standard uh starting of the game and then there is an exclusive exclusive full screen mode which is what i'm using the difference is the normal mode of full screen is actually a windowed full screen and the reason i've chose chosen the exclusive full screen is because this seems to be doing better performance wise right now and they're having some performance issues with the uh, the windowed full screen mode the normal mode uh, so I'm going to, to use the exclusive for now, and hopefully they'll get some issues uh, worked out. Uh, V-Sync will be turned off. Maximum FPS is set at 100. Not that that should matter a whole lot. Um, but then Gamma and Brightness are at 50%, which are the defaults. Then if we look at the graphic settings themselves, I have chosen to turn down a couple of things on both the graphics and the effects. Um, and that is because this game is very intensive on the computer, very intensive. And yesterday I was actually doing some recording uh, for a video that I planned to release yesterday about this game, but unfortunately I was getting too much, too much lag, uh, too much uh, freezing in the game. It was, it was a real, it became enough of a problem that I decided to uh, go away from that idea and come back and try again uh, today. So the graphics... I use a GTX 1070 graphics card, so I should have plenty of horsepower to push the same, even, even though it is definitely not the most powerful graphics card on the market. Texture quality, I want it to be the best it can possibly be. I've turned down shadows, and I'm hoping that, because shadows are notorious FPS killers in games, so I've turned that down to medium, and who knows, I may need to turn it down lower. Lighting, I've left on high. Grass density on ultra. I've turned up the grass render and the crops render distance both to 100%. By default, they are on 50%. And then object detail range, I have maxed out at 3.0. It's usually, uh, I believe it's either 1.0 or 1.5 uh, by default. The effects, uh, I have turned down the anti-aliasing quality to low. And then you can see a, a few other things I've disabled in here. Again, this is just to try to keep from having any stuttering and screen freezes during our gameplay because you guys don't enjoy those. I don't enjoy those playing. So we're going to hope that we can stay away from that. But I did want to let you know that when I was playing uh, sort of offline, when I was not recording, I really didn't have very many issues. There were a few here and there, but overall I could crank these things up and not have any issues. So the changes that I'm making here are purely for recording purposes because the game is indeed so intensive. All right, so for now, let's go back to our free farming and we'll click on new game to get started. And we have several maps to deal with. We've got the possibility of starting on any one of these that we want. And beyond that, we will be able to use all of them during our gameplay. And that is because there is a mechanic in the game that for a small sum of money will allow you to move not only yourself, but also any machinery that you want between the different maps. So I kind of like that and it means that you don't have to choose a map and free play on this map and then start a different playthrough on another map. You can use them all. Okay, so there's Montana, which is by far the biggest and most robust map. There's Italy, Colombia, Japan, and finally Germany, which is by far the smallest map. So Montana, what you essentially get is, as I mentioned, it is the biggest, most robust map this is your your cornerstone this is your foundation of your farming because this is where you're going to find the most fields i think there's about 42 fields we'll see that here shortly but there are a lot of fields a lot of animal husbandry you can do a lot of locations for that there's a lot of orchards and just a lot of things to do there but as you move to italy italy is going to be a more specific it is more of a refined uh, targeted approach uh, in this case, more about 
olives and about wine. Colombia is about hemp and also is about uh, coffee. Japan is about cherries. And then Germany is basically a pretty good starter map um, in that it is very small. It only has one field, but then it's got some other things that you can do on it. So it's a very small map. And this is the map you might recognize that was the free DLC for anyone who pre-ordered the game. So we're going to start out on Montana and then we'll branch out uh, over time to the different maps. We also get to set our starting balance. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and max because I'm not interested in difficulty in this game. We're going to have fun. So that means we're going to try to travel around, do some different things, experience some different things, and try out some different ways of doing stuff because that's what this is about. This is not about, hey, well, let's get to a million dollars as quickly as we possibly can. And this, that's not what this is about. This is going to be about having fun, a very uh, relaxed type of playthrough. Okay, so 200000 is unfortunately the max. I would go higher than that if we could because I am very interested in buying stuff, uh, equipment. I'm interested in buying all sorts of uh, plots of land and, and just experiencing everything that the game has to offer. So this first loading screen, I am not uh, pausing or separating and editing the video during this because I want you to get an idea of the loading screen time. Okay, so you can see it's a few seconds, but not all that long. So that brings us to the spawn location here in the Montana map. Okay, so if you look around, again, we're going to get our first glimpse into the graphics and how we want to play the game. We have lots of the, the controls that you would expect. We can uh, speed up or slow down time. And But I can tell you that by default, the time moves very quickly in this game. And you'll find yourself... Um, at least I have so far in my playthroughs, actually needing to, to slow down time and not being able to because there's so much to get done in such a short amount of time. Let's go ahead and for now, we're not going to worry about the time. Let's go ahead and look at probably the most important aspect of this game, and that is your tablet. So I press V to bring up the tablet. And this is where you're going to find any and all information about your, uh, your farm. So here we have, we start out with statistics. This is going to give you the option of choosing any number of different categories of things that you might have purchased, any work you might be doing, and it will simply give you efficiency numbers as well as uh, revenue information on the different, whether it's the fields or the greenhouses that you own and profitability numbers, efficiency numbers there as well. And the same thing going on uh, down. There is a shop where you can buy various uh, materials. You can see you can buy everything from fertilizer to various different products. You can also sell products on here, but very interesting that whenever you're selling through the tablet, the prices are 20% worse whenever you're selling and of course 20% higher when you're buying through the tablet as opposed to going to the physical map location and selling the products. I actually don't mind that at all. We'll be using both. There will be times where I'm sure I'll want to buy or sell through the tablet for ease of use and then times where I simply want to get it done quicker and for that we'll be uh, using the tablet. You can also, you can see, sell animals directly from, uh, from their pens or barns. We have the stock market here which shows the different prices as they rise and fall for the different products within the game. Okay, then we have a bank application if we want to try to get a loan, and who knows, we may decide we want to do that and really expand very quickly. You've also got the functionality. Player status, this will give you an overview of what we own as far as buildings, field, uh, vehicles, and so forth. Uh, recovering vehicles, that this is actually used in a couple of different ways. Uh, but, but the most notable will be whenever we have to do fixes in the shop to uh, do routine maintenance on our vehicles. And then we've got some notifications. So then we move on to what everybody's probably most interested in, and that is the vehicle store. Again, we have that notification that the prices are going to be 20% higher. But this is where you can purchase all of your machinery. And of course, we're going to have various different 
uh, types of machine shooters, anything from uh, tractors and combines to trailers, um, uh, the big rigs, and so forth can be purchased here. The one thing I automatically wish that they would have changed just in my brief time is I wish they would have something here on the screen that tells what type of implement this is. And what I mean by that is if we click on information here, it says that this is tractor medium. Okay, and then all of your implements feed off of that. If I click on the information for this particular one, you can see that it's compatible with these types of uh, tractors slash combines. Okay, and one of the things you can see here is tractor light and tractor medium. So it would be nice if this information was out here so I didn't have to go quite so far in figuring out would a, a particular tractor work with a particular implement. So, uh, but otherwise I have found the system to be pretty easy to use. Uh, whenever you purchase something, it is sent directly to uh, one of your uh, properties. So whatever shed you might have uh, space available in, it will try to put the tractor or implement in that particular space. So for me, that means I wanna keep the space open as much as possible. Okay, then we have the drone mode. I'm not gonna click on that right now because as soon as you click on it, it activates the drone. And the drone is just what you would think it is. It flies above the land and gives you the ability to uh, very quickly move around and see the status of uh, various things on your property as well as the map in general without having to physically go to those locations. Okay, then we have the map itself. So here we are right in front of our house, which can be used uh, to, there's no sleeping in this game or no uh, stamina regeneration, anything like that. Uh, for those of you who were with me in Real Farm, you do know that that is something you have to deal with in that game, uh, but not in this game. The house is used to fast forward through the nighttime if you so desire, and that is its function in the game. Here you can see the workshop. This is where you can do uh, upgrades or routine maintenance from time to time that will be needed on the vehicles. And then in front of us, you see the shed that is uh, on screen. And this is where all the different implements are that we currently own from the beginning. We also have various other things. This is where we can uh, purchase different seeds from. This is where we can purchase uh, fertilizer from. And then there's gonna be spots for, uh, for getting water and just about everything you can imagine. So let's go ahead and zoom out so we can see the entirety of the map. So you can see the map has a lot going on. And okay, so we've got 41, I believe, 41 fields that we can purchase of varying sizes. And we're gonna be taking a look at these going forward, but the first field that is right next to us in the game is actually a two acre field. So a very small field, and you can see field four, which we do not own currently is the same size. And then we also own field number 39, which is a bit larger. It is four acres. So plenty of fields to keep us busy, busy within the game. There are plenty of other things. Uh, there are also very close to us solar panels that we can purchase. And if I work my way down toward the bottom of the map, you can see windmills. So we've got wind turbines that can be purchased down here. And it also shows you the price that those can be purchased for. So we plan on doing a little bit of everything. So anything you need to know, you can find out on this map. But as you can see, there is a lot going on on this map. And of course, we'll be exploring this in much greater detail as the gameplay footage uh, moves on into further episodes. But for now, a few things I want to point out is that up at the very, the northernmost section of the usable map is the logistics center. This is where you would take any equipment uh, that you want to travel and send to other maps. This is where you can do that. Again, you can travel uh, straight from your device here. The, the tablet will work for that, but it costs a little bit more to do that. So they are trying to get you to explore the map physically, and that's where you would go to do that very thing. You also have various locations around the map where you're gonna sell the different goods. You can see you go to the motel and these are the goods you can sell there. Okay, also you have, uh, there is various different factories and creameries where you can sell milk. 
Okay, so then we've got more wind turbines. There are multiple locations around the map where you can get into the renewable energy, either the, uh, the wind turbines or the solar panels. And then also, pretty close nearby, there is an apple orchard. There are apple orchards here and then somewhere over in this area, I forget exactly where, there it is, you've got a pear orchard. Okay, that we can purchase there. And of course, it shows you the different value that we can get for that. And of course, all of these will require uh, certain equipment, which means that we'll need to purchase certain tractors and certain implements to do this. So to get started, we're going to, we're going to go ahead and work the nearest location to us, the closest field, and we're just going to see how things work. Um, we've got some money. We're going to see if we got any equipment that we want to sell, maybe replace that sort of thing. But before I get out of the map, there is one more function that I wanted to let you know about, and that is the search function. So if I press in, it brings up the search function, and let's say you're looking for something on the map, but you just can't remember where it's at, and you don't want to spend all day long looking for it with all of the different icons that are on this map. Well, here you go. If you want to see which properties do I own, you click on Shed 1, and it will zoom us right in on Shed 1. We own field 39, but I don't know where that's at. It takes you right to it. And then you can also do that with services, which is in general places that you would go either to buy or sell equipment. Trade center is where we would go to physically purchase at a reduced price uh, the different uh, tractors and implements that we would want. Workshops are where we do uh, repairs and routine maintenance, as well as some upgrades. Then we've got the different fields. If you want to find an orchard, we've got two apple orchards. You can see here we've got three pear orchards and a couple of plum orchards on the map as well. So a lot of room for expansion. We've got a lot of fields that we can purchase. We've got several orchards. We've got livestock. You can see here we've got seven chicken coops that we can uh, purchase. We've got three cow barns, three pig styes, and a grand total of six rabbit cages. So all sorts of stuff. And if you just want to go quickly to one of these locations and see where it's at on the map, then this is the easy way uh, to do it. So let's go ahead and come out of there. And here is the field, the two acre field to give you an idea of what this looks like in terms of gameplay and the scale of everything. All right, so this is what two acres looks like on the map. All right, let's see what type of equipment they have gotten for us. Okay, I see a very small tractor there. We'll have to see what use we can make of that, but this is gonna be our baseline tractor. This is gonna be our workhorse for sure. All right, for now, I'm gonna be using the keyboard and mouse to steer. I prefer to do it with uh, the wheel and pedals, but we've got a few issues there, and I really don't want to uh, move back and forth quite as much right now, so we're going to try to do our best with with the uh, keyboard and mouse for now for our steering. It is very sensitive. Um, a slight touch to go left or right is a big deal. All right. Let's see. Let's see if I can get over here. No, it's not going to let me. It's not going to let me get by with that terrible job of backing in. Now we get into camera issues. Oh, there we go. That's close enough. The game says we're going to let you have that. All right, so we're going to head over to the field. We need to get started by plowing the field. And as we get over very close. Okay. That is actually on the top left hand corner. That's the bottom option. It is J. But before we hire the worker, take a look on the right hand side of the screen and you can see there are percentages. Plowed, cult cultivation, sowing, fertilization, irrigation, and spraying. These are all things that we're gonna need to do to this field in order to get the maximum yield. For now, I'm gonna get him a little bit closer and then I'm gonna press J to hire the worker and fortunately, the worker does not disappear. He stays in the tractor. There you can see we've got a guy in the tractor. He's going to lower that plow down a little bit too early. 
All right, there we go. Now he takes off, and you can see in the bottom left-hand side in real time on the mini-map, you can see his work progress. You can see the, the area that he's plowed versus the time he still has remaining, or the amount he still has remaining, rather. So we've got a couple of fields to get us started, but I want to do some other things. We've got uh, a greenhouse you can barely see right over there. There's a greenhouse right in front of us, and then another greenhouse right over the top of my head there, as well as if we go and look on the other side. Now, by the way, we do have a truck for us right here on the map. There we go. Woo. Some, some freezes there. Okay. Along with a car wash right there. So anything you want to, you want to wash, you can bring right up to the car wash. Okay. So let's move over. Now on the left here, we've got some rabbit hutches. Okay. Let's go ahead and Let's see what we've got. We walk into the circle. We can buy these for 5,000. So 5,000, it is a level one. Uh, some, of the, some of the items in the game will have different upgrade levels, such as uh, the greenhouses. All right, there we go. So our building is complete. Okay, we walk back in and we'll press I to buy an animal. So right now you can see on the right-hand side, we are filling this thing up with young rabbits. Now, the good thing about the rabbits in the game is that you don't have to feed them anything. You don't have to bring any feed of any kind to them, no upkeep whatsoever. We simply paid $20 per rabbit, and then we're going to let them grow up over the course of, I think it takes three to five days roughly uh, for maximum efficiency on that, but maybe less, I can't remember. We're gonna do the same thing. Let's go ahead and get this one, this should be a good way to get some, some early money in the game because it doesn't cost a whole lot to get going. There we go. Let's go ahead and fill this up with the maximum number of rabbits. There we go. And then whenever it's time, whenever we have um, the rabbits at, at full growth and we're ready to sell them, whenever they're mature, we'll go ahead and sell those and hopefully make some profit and that'll be a way of getting some easy money. And the way we'll do that is simply through uh, the tablet. Uh, let's see, where was that? There we go. Selling animals. And you can see here, right now we could sell them for 10 apiece. Well, we don't want to do that. We just paid uh, 20 for them. So we're going to check back on that. There we go. We can see our worker in the background. After my time in uh, Real Farm, it looks very nice uh, to see that worker actually out there on the farm doing his work. All right, so we've got a couple more into, uh, implements to take a look at. Of course, we've got a cultivator, we've got a cedar, and but I'm not really interested um, in those two pieces being separately, uh, being separate. I am a huge fan of those being as one. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into the store. Let's go into the vehicle store. We're gonna go under cultivation. And we're going to take a look at the different plows, cultivators, and so on that we can get. So here's the basic plow that we're using right now uh, on the field. We have a, an upgraded plow that is about one and a half times. And then we have uh, this plow that is three times the working width as uh, the one we're currently using. Some more, uh, we have some cultivators in here. But what I'm interested in is right here and this implement it says that the, the main advantage is that you can start seeding immediately after you finish plowing and that is because it is a cultivator as well as a seeder so that will cut out one of the steps for us okay so but before we can do that we need to sell some things and again i'm not going to do these physically at the shop location so we're going to get a little bit less for them but i'm okay with that all right, let's find, there is our cedar. We're gonna be able to sell this. Are you sure you wanna make the sale? Yes, I am. So 11,839. And let's see, where is, oh, I must've gone by it. There we go. So now we have our cultivator, about $3,900. Let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we will 
get out of there and you can see we have plenty of space now available now we can actually come into the vehicle store and buy the drill that we were after so let's go ahead and buy that you can see it asked me now where I want to put it shed number one and we have five slots free there currently and there we go so it puts those into into one of the five open slots all right so now we have we have our small tractor which is going to be useful for some of the light activities let's go ahead and see if we can back this thing in here see if I can do it blind let's try to get it on there there we go the game had mercy on me once again all right so this is going to be useful particularly whenever we get into uh, greenhouses and probably some with the orchards too although I'm thinking I'll need a a uh, bigger trailer with a larger capacity for that but yeah I'm thinking that will be very useful wow some more ooh freezes stop it hopefully they get these performance issues worked out all right now we've got our our harvester our combine here but the reason I, I want to go ahead and move this thing out of the way and the reason is it's in the way of our fertilizer both the fertilizer bags as well as the liquid fertilizer so let's go ahead and get in oh goodness gracious the performance issues okay let's press G to attach the front device and I'm gonna go ahead and move this thing out of the way now I am not a big fan of using the sheds for storage uh, number one uh, and most importantly because I don't like having to back in <laughs> turn these things I'm not great at driving these things particularly with the camera angles that we have so I plan on using uh, these simply for an area for whenever we purchase new new tractors and implements that they'll have a, a spot a location to go so I don't plan on using them for long-term storage all right so right now we have a hundred and ninety thousand so far we have uh, a few things that it's been kind enough to give us we've swapped a few of them out uh, and got a new planner and cultivator combination we can see our worker is looks like about halfway done over here so what do we want to get into next I definitely want to get into uh, the renewable energy back behind me there uh, you can see at the top of that hill just ahead there are is a solar panel location and then sort of over in over to the right here if we go a little bit farther uh, there are some windmill locations in fact you can see where their spots that can be built just over the top of my hat right now so I want to get into those simply because they have no upkeep and they will pay us money on a daily basis but first let's sort of think about uh, how we want to work our lands we've got one tractor a medium tractor as we saw earlier in the stores it's considered a, a medium tractor All right, let's go back into the store so now we have a plow a very basic plow but it'll do just fine for uh, the property that we have currently uh, we've got a cedar slash cultivator so we're good there but what else do we need well if we come in real quickly to our map it gives us an updated overview of where our land is so we we've got a plow we've got cultivation and sowing taken care of now we need to have a way of fertilizing all right let's go into the store and cultivation now obviously with fertilizing we have some options uh, we could use uh, manure or slurry but right now we don't have any animals from which to obtain that so we're gonna have to go with the synthetic fertilizer so for that we are going to buy this implement and it says it's a basic spreader which is useful in any field but the most important thing is the compatibility obviously the heavy tractor and a caterpillar would be uh, would be possible but we don't want to spend that kind of money we can use a light tractor uh, you can see there's two of those and I'll show you what those refer to I wish there was a way to determine which was which because uh, they look the same but uh, I'll show you what I believe that's referring to in just a moment 
and then the medium tractor so obviously we can use the tractor we already have but i want to purchase some additional uh, tractors first we need to purchase this implement there we go so now that's going to be over here behind us in the shed and then let's take a look at what i believe this is referring to as far as light tractors so there are two possibilities here first of all this tractor that we have one of and we're going to be using for our greenhouses i think mostly is considered a light tractor but in my uh, testing i've found that it will not connect to all the implements that say they should be compatible with a light tractor so this is what i believe the other light tractor is referring to and this is the dlc that i showed you a little bit earlier this is also considered a light tractor and I love the price well right now they're giving me one free uh, as part of the DLC so we're gonna go ahead and buy that okay you can see we're down to four free slots in the shit so there we go so now we've got okay let's go ahead and spin around this guy is yeah he's still got a little while but not too terribly long there we go you can see our available and this is a very nice little tractor it doesn't cost very much and if we come back in and just take a look at this thing so it costs fifteen thousand we've gotten our free one out of the way but now they cost fifteen thousand and it can do quite a bit as opposed to having to spend you know almost thirty six thousand dollars on this or thirty thousand on one of the uh, the landinis so both of those would be very good for uh, a lot of what we're going to need to do around uh, the farm okay so let's click back on our our field and again you can see the work he's doing you can also see this from uh, the drone in real time so he's plowing we've got cultivating and sowing taken care of now we have fertilization taken care of next would be irrigation and then spraying so let's go back into the store and let's see what we would need for that the good thing is under cultivation you've really got everything you need sort of in the order you need it uh, there's another uh, spreader then we've got uh, you can work with manure and then we've got some sowers and then finally we come down to there we go we've got a sprayer so this is going to be a huge sprayer which is massive overkill for our smaller farm but this will give us the ability to spray and let's see what it is compatible with so of course we've got the heavy equipment as well as the tractor medium so that tells me that uh, it's not going to connect to this new tractor we just purchased not the tractor light so let's go ahead and buy this one we've got three slots available and there you go that is a large implement there very large and I'm gonna go ahead and purchase because we're not looking for efficiency here we're looking to have fun I'm gonna go ahead and purchase uh, another tractor and we're gonna go with a medium tractor however notice that we have some different options all of these are considered medium tractors in this area and then we come down a little bit more and we get into our first heavy tractor so that gives you an idea you've got options there and that's how the game breaks up what is compatible with what then we have our track device the caterpillar light so whenever you see caterpillar light or heavy it's referring to the track devices right there and it, it does tell you that this tractor is capable of doing most any field work and that's what I've seen so far so a very handy uh, tool we're actually going to go ahead and purchase another one of these purely from a cost perspective for now and then later on who knows we might want to um, we might want to upgrade so I saw our tractor pop up over there so now we only have one other thing that we need clicking back on our farm we need irrigation okay and for irrigation we need one more thing but first um, I think I need to I need to move some equipment all right so let's see how good I'm gonna be able to do with this all right, we should be in pretty good shape to back up here again my ooh, never mind the game is being very kind to me right now 
and I am very appreciative of it. Okay, so there's our fertilizer. Uh, let's go ahead and get it moved out of the way. Wow, some more hesitation there. And then we're going to bring it over to our one-stop shop for all things uh, fertilizing and spraying. So there you can see R at the bottom of the screen says fertilizer. So we're going to press R and that will simply fill us up with fertilizer. Now, when the worker is on the field, he does not use any of our product. Okay, it's required to be in there, but he doesn't use any of the product. And that, I'm sure that most of you are familiar with that way of doing it from uh, Farming Sim. So we're just going to go ahead and park it sort of over here out of the way. There we go. We're going to hop out. And now we're going to pick up our second. Oh, good gracious. Really be excited whenever they get some of this worked out. Again, I didn't see near as much of this um, in the game when I was not recording, but it's still there. Okay, let's go ahead and let that attach. And same thing, we're just going to sort of move this out of the way for now so that we can get our final implement. Okay, which we need, and it is going to be a water tank. Okay, so let's go back in. Let's take a look in. I can't remember where it's at. I think it's under trailers. We'll find out. There we go. So here we have our water tank. There is the tank for manure. And of course, we got a couple of options here. We're going to go with the baseline option instead of the uh, larger capacity model. What do we need to pull this? So a tractor light will actually pull this as well as a medium or, of course, the heavy. So a tractor light will pull that. That is excellent. Let's go ahead and buy that. These will be very useful for us. In fact, we're probably going to end up getting uh, multiple of these because they're going to be extremely handy, not just on the fields, but with the greenhouses as well as... Oh, we are actually done. Now, we can uh, teleport to any of our machines. I'm going to press Tab, and you can see we've got options. We can teleport to our, any cars harvesters or tractors so where I want to go right now and of course in the the center of the screen it's showing you exactly where that one is okay I'm gonna go ahead and press enter now because that's the one I want to teleport to and here we are so now the worker is gone we are done with the plow for a little while I believe it's every fifth Uh, growing, you need to, to swap this out. Wow, this is really, really giving me some issues right now. All right, so let's go ahead and put this one over to the side here. Okay, we're going to press T to detach the plow. And now that I think it's done, yeah, it's done. All right, we're going to come back out. And now we are actually going to Ooh, that is terrible even without seeing I can tell that's terrible all right where are we here there we go game being kind to me and I'm it is very much appreciated all right now we need to get some seeds are we connected yeah now we need to get some seeds and we also need to turn on our lights so that's f2 press that three times and get our lights going. Oh, the game didn't like that. All right, so the seeds we're going to be using for the most part are over here. Uh, potatoes are in a different location as far as the seeds and the storage. But for now, over here, we have access to the basics. And if you look at the bottom of the screen, there we go. So we've got wheat. We're going to start out with wheat. And I'm going to press R and fill up with the wheat and as I continue to move forward we got rye in the second pallet and then barley in the final pallet so eventually we'll be using all of those but for now we're going to start out with wheat okay so now we're going to head back over to our field and do the same thing we're going to hire that farmer we have hundred and twenty thousand dollars remaining All right, there we go. So again, every time you get close to a field, it's gonna show you 
uh, the different percentages and where your field is. We're going to press J, hire that worker. There we go. So we'll let him, we'll get out of his way and let him do his thing. And we are actually going to take the small tractor and the small trailer and we are going to go and we're going to head right over, let's see, let's go over in this direction. As I mentioned earlier, we've got some greenhouses uh, and I know we're running a little bit longer than I had planned in this episode, but there's a few things I want to show you to get started in this episode and then we'll come back and continue our gameplay obviously in future episodes. But I did want to come over and show you one of the greenhouses. All right, so the greenhouses we have, we will have an option of several things that we can grow in the greenhouse. And then we've got a few areas around the side. This is where we will put the fertilizer. And then over on the other side, you see the back side there, there is a tank. That's where we'll be putting the water. So if we walk up to the greenhouse, it tells us that this is $15,000. There's also an, an additional upgrade which will make it much more profitable and obviously able to grow much more in the way of crops. So when we come back next time, we'll get started with purchasing a greenhouse and we'll get going uh, with even more gameplay of Pure Farming 2018.